When we use the word home, we mean something more than just four walls and a roof. Ideally, it's a place where we can have privacy, feel safe, and find peace. More than 50 years ago, the United Nations issued a declaration that having shelter is a basic human right. Later, a group of countries, including the United States, signed a treaty agreeing that everyone has a right to a secure place to live. While in reality, it doesn't work this way. There are still homeless people all over the world. You should know that it is your right to have shelter. You know, what do we mean by basic human rights? And to me, part of that is like, maybe it's a basic human generosity, like caring for each other, being stewards to each other. Is it a human right? I think, it's, I think it is, yeah. And we should be concerned for each other. Yes. I think that having shelter is definitely a basic human right because uh, I was homeless and uh, I slept under bridges. I slept at friends' houses, all while, uh, all while still going to high school, all still while going to school. And sometimes I had to lie and pretend that I lived, you know, in the neighborhood. We're beginning to hit a point where we understand that homeless is not a decision. Nobody wants to be that way. I believe it's everybody's inalienable right to housing. How did they get there? So many different ways to become homeless. You can have a job um, and need two jobs. And you lose one job and you can't pay your rent. And now you're homeless. Um, you can have a job, have an injury, lose half your pay, now you're getting disability, you're, you're getting disability payments, but it's not enough to pay your rent and your car payment, and so your car gets repossessed, and then you get evicted from your apartment, and now you're homeless. There are any number of situations that can cause you to be homeless, things that you truly have no control over, that are outside of what we think of as typical homelessness. My clients do not want to be homeless. They, um, they're appreciative, of the time that they get to spend here. But ultimately, everybody's one of everybody's goals is to get permanent housing for their families and to not be here forever. I imagine the effects of being homeless could be very isolating, um, frustrating, a feeling of not being a part of something. So, um, in my line of work, like being a leasing consultant, oftentimes I do need to, you know, um, address the homeless who are making their way into, you know, the apartment building or whatnot. I choose to ask if I can be a contribution, ask them if I can help them, and then just communicate that, you know, I'm sorry, but I do need you to, to move on. This is for our residents or whatnot, and, you know, just at least giving them an opportunity to ask for something so that I have an opportunity to, to contribute to them. That's another person and, you know, they're living their life and there's a contribution in that life to me and to everyone. I don't know how that looks or how that plays out, but it's not up to me to judge. A home can give you physical safety, a place to stay healthy, psychological safety, personal space and privacy, or a place to gather with friends and family. It doesn't matter if the place where we live is an apartment, condo, a house, a sober living situation, or a group home. What matters is that it's a place we can call home. To me, home is, home is deciding that it's home, like really creating it. It doesn't have to be a location. You can be at home anywhere. It's just being comfortable, being in a place where you can be yourself, and you can have that anywhere. I think home is inside you. Home is that space where you can be yourself. Home is comfort. Home is where you, well, home is where you don't have to worry about the rest of the world and how they feel about you.